All right, it is Friday, September the 21st, 2012. Uh, pretty soon, before you know it, it's going to be November 6, 2012, and that's the day where you can um, uh, do what uh, what um, you, you have as much voice as any congressperson, president, um, Supreme Court judge, or whatever. You can vote. Um, you can uh, vote on your verdict uh, for your candidates. November 6th, of course, is election day. It's the first Tuesday of November. And uh, this is Thomas Keegan with LibertarianProgressive.com. Today, we're in our um, quest to interview up to 50 independent third-party candidates. They're going to be on the 2012 ballots all around the country. We have Hank Bardell for U.S. Congress um, running for District uh, 11 in New York. And um, Hank, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe your um, opponents are Yvette Clark running on the Democratic tickets. And, um, and uh, it, no. Oh, please. Okay. Correct me. It's uh, it's a Michael Murphy. Uh, Michael. Uh, Grim, okay. uh, running on with the on the re, uh, Republican ticket, and I think it's um, uh, I think his first name is Mark Murphy, and he's uh, running on the uh, Democratic ticket. Okay, and and you're running on the Green Party ticket, That's and right. I know there's been a lot of redistricting in New York this year, so. Um, so the districts um, don't look exactly as they did last time around. So I'm sorry, it, it looks like some of the internet sites aren't even updated yet. But um, those are your opponents, a Democrat and Republican. Yeah. And um, now, Hank, um, you're running on Green Party. Uh, you're the only alternative candidate that's really going to be on the ballot this year in District 11. And uh, we've interviewed many independent third-party candidates so far. We've always started out by asking them a little bit about themselves and what motivated them to run. Because after all, we ask that because a lot of people choose to just ignore politics. I mean, honestly, Hank, half the people in this country don't even vote. Um, and, and most people don't even consider themselves a Republican Democrat. Most people are registered as independents. And um, in Congress right now has a 10% approval rating um, according to the Gallup polls and so please tell us what motivated you a little bit about yourself and if you could also slip in there a little bit about the 11th district for our um, viewers uh, or listeners I should say that um, you know never really visited the 11th district sir yeah um, well I've been interested in politics uh, for about uh, over 50 years um, and uh, you know, uh, at first I, be, you know, became interested in uh, socialist politics, and then uh, uh, gradually uh, my ideas uh, uh, became more uh, uh, towards, uh, you know, accepting uh, a, uh, a more, um, uh, you know, uh, economy that's uh, more, more market economy than, and, uh, but more of a, more of a uh, uh, well you know they're basically a market economy more small business like medium sized business kind of yeah like mixed uh, yeah. that's what I wanted to say uh, more of a mixed market economy so uh, that's why I'm in the uh, Green Party it's not there's a lot of socialists in the Green Party, but um, there's a, you know it's not strictly a socialist party. You know, to me, that's just a word. I know you know that's a stigma that people like to place socialism. Um, it's just a word to me. I mean, if you actually look at the Green Party platform, there's a lot of um, things on that platform that um, support small business. And um, actually, if you look at the platform, it, it might surprise some people. Uh, but yeah, please continue, Hank. And actually, a lot of people call. Um, I just want to say real quick. A lot of people are blaming what happened in 2008 and and before on capitalism. And I would argue that's not really technically capitalism. It's really fascism when when you help out certain businesses. And the Obamacare, that's not really socialism. Republicans get away with calling it socialism, but it's not socialism. That's also fascism. I would say. The, the, what we're fighting against, whether you're Libertarian, Green Party, whatever, 
is against fascism. It's not against socialism or capitalism. But, Hank, please uh, take it away, sir. Thanks. Okay, well, <clears throat> you know, fascism is where, uh, in my opinion, where the rich uh, uh, become the dictators. And they, they, uh, uh, they join uh, with the, uh, you know, uh, join up with the, with the corporations and uh, uh, the rich, and uh, they appoint somebody who uh, becomes the, the dictator, you know, like, uh, like they had in Italy with Mussolini and in Germany with, the, uh, with uh, Adolf Hitler. Uh, to me, that's, that, that is, the, is really uh, fascism. Uh, it's the dictatorship of the right. Um, uh, of course, you know, my understanding of uh, the politics is, uh, is uh, the, the, the political spectrum. And uh, you have a right and a left. You know, this all began, uh, you know, I think in the, uh, the French Parliament in the 18th and 19th centuries. That's why we have a left and a right. They sat the people who, who supported the, uh, uh, the privileged people, uh, uh, like the rich uh, and the, uh, and the uh, uh, clergy, maybe, uh, uh, on, on the right side of the, of the parliament. And, they, and on the left, they put the people who supported the middle class and the working class, they put those politicians on the left. So that's why we have a, a political spectrum that's on the right and the left. Now, uh, when you have a dictatorship of, uh, of the left, you know, like the communists, uh, you know, uh, that's that's not democracy. It's uh, it's uh, it's a uh, you know dictatorship of the left, uh, and uh, on the right, when you have a dictatorship of the right, that's fascism. Yeah, they're uh, pretty much the same thing. I mean, I don't see you know them as a big difference at all, really, to be quite honest. Well, the the, the communists say they support the average person. Um, actually. Uh, uh, it's a form of elitism. Now, I'm really against uh, elitism. Exactly. Um, it, it's the Communist Party telling everybody what to do. It's a, uh, the Communist Party is a, uh, uh, you know, a, 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 an elite. And, and they, uh, they want to dictate to everybody else. It's not democracy. I firmly believe in, in democracy. On the, on, the, on the right, you have people uh, who want to who dictate. They're the, the type of elite. Uh, and and uh, when they become dictators, that's, to me, that's fascism. And they support uh, you know, uh, uh, very rich people, the plutocracy, uh, that's another word that I'd like to define. Uh, it's in the dictionary. Anybody could look it up. I, it's not my definition. A plutocracy is where, uh, you know, uh, the rich people uh, buy the candidates. Yeah, it's really all the same, whether it's autocracy, whether it's um, an autocratic government, whether it's feudalism, whether it's fascism, whether it's... Um, dictatorship i mean it's all but basically the bottom line is those are all tyrannies those are all where there is no equal justice under the law there's um second class citizens and then there's first class citizens and um i mean that's i think the bottom line yeah there's, uh, there's no democracy uh under these uh, autocratic sy uh, systems of communism and uh, uh, fascism. Yeah, there's two classes of citizens. You're either an elite, where you know you get the red carpets, you get the no bid contracts, you get some um, people 
dying for you, and um, and uh, or you're one of the second class citizens where you, you, you know um, your uh, voice is spread out amongst the masses and it's not as concentrated as the elites, who you, you know their vote pretty much counts as like just as much as like a hundred thousand like regular people's votes i mean i'd say we are we should be a democracy i mean um a democratically elected republic i mean we do have you know different branches of government we also have a supreme court and um oh. like executive a congress a house uh, and if i could say uh, unfortunately uh there's money in politics uh big money you know i think i heard uh uh, this past week that, uh, you know, Obama is going to uh, get uh, a billion dollars for his, you know, when you count up all the money in his campaign. And and uh, Romney uh, is around that. He's going to be getting that much, uh, you know, if not more. If not um, more, because there's some money we can't even count if you count the super PACs and stuff like that. Right. So uh, that might far exceed the, the numbers that are on the books. We'll never you know, know. You know, Ralph Nader, uh, you know, suggested and recommended uh, ten years ago, or something like that, that we get the money out of politics. <laughs> when a when a, a government, uh, I mean, when when there's elections, uh, we should uh, get you know, money, a certain amount of money to run in a certain amount of time. We express our ideas, but uh, just rely on the money that we get from our government and, uh, uh, you know, not rely on, on uh, the plutocracy for, for, for money. The, the plutocracy is where the rich give money to the, uh, uh, you know, the politicians, and they wind up controlling them. <coughs> this is uh, an obviously not uh, good democracy. And that's what, in my opinion, that's what we have well, in the United States. we have States. to look at a process. I mean, now there's electronic voting. Now there's also, you know, I mean, look at, the debate commission it used to be the league of women voters that hosted the debates for the presidential elections now it's some kind of corporation where the republicans and the democrats are the only ones allowed to sit on the board so um i mean you don't even have you know a lot of independent third party like a lot of people think there's only a republican and democrat on the ballot there's probably a lot of people that don't even realize that you're even on the ballots yet you know yes because yeah. of the media you're probably right yeah because how can we make a fully informed decision if we don't know all the choices? Well, that's why we should uh, get a, a certain amount of money and be giving uh, time on the media. I mean, if you, if you got on the ballot, don't you think you should be guaranteed to be in the debates? Yes, absolutely. I should be... I mean, if you got, on, you got enough signatures to get on the ballot, right? That. Uh, yes, I'm on the ballot. That's absolutely right. I, I should be uh, uh, invited to all the debates. I mean, didn't uh, Thomas well, Jefferson I, and the founders want a we fully have, informed public? Yes, we we have a, a we in the Green Party have a certain point of view, and we should be able to express that to the uh, to uh, our constituents, the public. And in my case, it's the 11th Congressional District, which includes uh, Staten Island and uh, parts of Brooklyn. Part oh, of Brooklyn. Okay, so that's Staten Island and parts of Brooklyn. All right. Yes. So, uh, like I was saying before, um, you know, w w what I believe in is a, uh, an eco uh, a market economy uh, where we have... Uh, uh, you know, a combination of uh, all kinds of uh, business models, socialist and, uh, um, you know, capitalist. <coughs> you know, we, we should have uh, 
the small businesses, which they have medium size and, and uh, big corporations. But in my opinion, now this is, I know it goes against the libertarian ideas, we should have a well-regulated uh, uh, corporations. So it, it, it's controlled uh, for, you know, to, to work for the people. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, and we also have, uh, you know, uh, the gov uh, government enterprises, and we should uh, our government uh, doing work uh, like, uh, like uh, NASA? Wh what we have now is, is like fire departments, uh, police departments, uh, parks departments, and uh, you know, so uh, we should also have uh, non-profit organizations, mm -hmm. you know, uh, a real, uh, everything, all the business models should exist in a market economy. And in my opinion, uh, the government should be uh, regulating the, the uh, so that there is no concentration of wealth. Yeah, I think the Green Party, as I heard it once said, it's not so much about socialism or anything like that. It's more about not letting one group, it's more about power. It's more about not letting one group get too much power because we know unlimited power um, un, you know will end up corrupting I mean um, unfettered power always corrupts I mean I think the saying goes something like that and um, I mean and, and Hank I when, when I called you up you, you're saying you know I told you the name of our website libertarian progressive and um, and to some people they, they might think of that as a paradox libertarian progressive what does that mean I mean, I know what libertarians are, and I know what progressives are, but to put it all in the same word, and, and again, what we're talking about here is I feel like um, I could be at home in either party, I mean, honestly, and to some people that might sound very strange, but I'm, I guess, someone that's a little more practical. Um, I do have very strong principles. I'm a civil libertarian, um, and that's what, to me, that unites it. I mean, if you're a civil libertarian, I don't get as much into the environment, the economics. To me, my major focus is civil liberties. Uh, I, I, and, and to me, that's what unites the two. And I, I think civil liberties affects the economy. I think it affects the environment. I don't think you can separate the issues. But um, I think if you are a true civil libertarian, I mean, this last 12 years uh, at least has been a complete nightmare. And um, yeah. I mean, it's just been a trouncing of civil liberties. And I mean, everything from the Patriot Act to the NDAA to, you know, a torture yeah. and um, and all these things, the drug war, um, just invading people's houses without warrants, separating, you know, husbands and wives, putting them in jail because one person smoked a joint or something like that where there's a victimless crime, people going to jail for prostitution, even though I disagree with prostitution, I think it's exploitation of women, but you know what, I don't think, you know, they should go to jail. Um, and um, as long as it's, you know, uh, everyone is choosing on their own free will, and um, it's just unenforceable. Um, you know, jail is not the way to, um, y you know, confront that issue, um, yes. at, at least. I think it's more education. I, so yes. I mean, that's what I see in common, and that's what I see is, like, I think it's gotten to a point, unfortunately, where we do need a coalition on these, on these fundamental rights that people take for granted. Well, I, uh, I'm i a big civil libertarian, too, uh, big time. I, I support uh, civil liberties. I support the United States Constitution, the, the, the uh, First Ten Amendments, and, uh, you know, all the amendments of the Constitution. Well, you know, we have a Constitution, but uh, I do believe that it's being violated uh, and it's being violated by, uh, uh, you know, people we elected to to uh, make sure that it's not uh, violated. Um, yeah, we already have anarchy. A lot of people call libertarians anarchists. The real anarchists are the Republicans and the Democrats. They're the ones 
committing, you know, wanting to pass indefinite detention. They're the ones not giving people their due process, letting them know the evidence against them, the accusers against them, giving them a speedy trial due process, a jury of their peers. I mean, they're really the anarchists, that the, the Republicans and the Democrats. Yeah. Now, changing the subject a little bit, I think um, to understand what's going on in in uh, our economy, which is really depressing, uh, uh, you know, making a lot of people's lives miserable. I mean, uh, uh, it's uh, it's it's uh, really ridiculous, uh, uh, you know, what's going on in our society. We have to understand that. 40 to 50 percent of the wealth in the United States and the income is going to the uh, top one or two percent. Um, uh, you know, we have to, to be quite uh, frank, we have to have a redistribution of, uh, of wealth in the United States. Well, we already have had a redistribution of wealth. I mean, that's the argument. We just need to balance it back. I think um, there's already been a redistribution of wealth. Yeah, it's, but it's, and it's it, been from the poor middle class to that one per one percent. That's right. Yeah, we've that's already right. had a redistribution of wealth. So people complain about redistribution of wealth. It's already happened. We're just trying to, you know, you're just trying to put it back to the way. Level it out, level it out more to get it back into the to the hands of the poor and the middle class. Look, we have. Uh, I mean, they got bailed out for trillions of dollars. The, the very wealthy, the the people didn't get nothing. Well, we we have unemployment officially. It said to be uh, eight point three percent, but this does include people who who are unemployed and supposedly not uh, looking for work. Oh yeah, I mean, the real statistics are I mean, like it, depression level. Uh, unemployment could be as high as 16 to 17 percent of our workforce. You know, uh, 11 million, uh, 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 um, you know, uh, families own houses that are worth less than their mortgages. You know, they could have used all the money for the Democrat and Republican national conventions, $136 million, if you include the $100 million that was spent for security, and they could have bought um, 1,360 houses that are worth $100,000 each for that money instead. Right. Uh, we have millions of uh, f uh, And they families. could have fitted it with solar. <laughs> they could have just given that money to Habitat for Humanity. I mean, you know what? Even as libertarian, I think a lot of people would agree that, um, you know what, if you're going to spend that money, I, they would rather it go to Americans than, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, international corporations. Yeah, we, we have millions of, uh, of families that are in, in danger of foreclosure, and we have uh, 3.5 million people who are homeless in the United States. And, and a lot of that foreclosure is fraud, too. That's, they don't even have the deeds to those properties. That's why we need a redistribution of wealth in, in the United States. Uh, back from the 1%. You know, uh, my motto is if, if, you, if you like, uh, you know, uh, Occupy Wall Street, uh, You'll like my campaign. Well, uh, how about occupy the House of Representatives by sending Hank Bardell to the House of Representatives? Um, occupy the House by elections. Let's occupy the House and fill up the Congress as much That's as right. we can. That's I, right. I, I do believe in the, uh, you know, uh, in, the, in voting. Um, you know, we're, we're not uh, yeah. going to take over by... Uh, uh, by violence, right. uh, I I I you don't have to. believe in uh, voting. Yeah, and, and and I mean, so I, I do too, Hank. And actually, a lot of people in the Green Party and Libertarians choose not to vote. In fact, you know, about half the people don't vote. I can understand it. A lot of them think it's a protest vote. And um, I would just say this. I mean, the people. I mean. Even if you don't vote, 
there's a lot of people around you who are. I mean, think about the people who were in fascist Italy or Nazi Germany or the communist Soviet Union. They, maybe 50% of that population didn't vote. And you know what? It didn't turn out too good for them. I'll just say that. Yeah, and uh, let's look at uh, what happened uh, 60, over 60 years ago. Uh, uh, President Dwight Eisenhower, in his farewell speech, uh, warned the American uh, people against uh, the military, yeah, about, I should say, about the military-industrial complex. Yeah, I have that speech. Um, yeah, anyone can get it. Dwight D. Eisenhower's farewell address to the uh, nation. You know, I think, uh, I think a lot of Americans, if not most Americans, have forgotten about that speech. Um, you know, uh, we're involved in a war in uh, Afghanistan. You should put it up on your website. <laughs> Just, yeah. Oh, that's, yeah, that's a good idea, his speech. Um, well, I talk about it, though, on my website. Um, it, you know, we're involved in, a, in, a, in a, uh, Afghanistan for over 10 years, which is our longest war. Yeah, uh, longer than World War II. You know, it's causing uh, uh, terrible uh, uh, casualty to our troops. Uh, what is it for? In my opinion, it's basically to to boost the military industrial complex. I'm I'm sorry to put it so. Oh, yeah, the, now not everyone's losing their jobs nowadays. Some people are making record profits, actually. Well, four uh, uh, percent of the American co economy is so. Uh, uh, you know, with the uh, is uh, you Arms. know the uh, military industrial complex. We shouldn't be able to sell, they shouldn't be able to sell arms to other countries either. I mean, that's one thing. I, I, I think that if we have military planes and, and vehicles, we shouldn't be selling those to other countries that we could end up fighting either in the future. I mean. Yeah, this is all being done for the, to, to enrich the uh, military industrial complex, which, like I said, is 4% uh, of the uh, uh, gross domestic uh, Hank, product. here's the thing. A lot of people will say, all right, so let's say you cut the military budget in half, like back just to where the levels were in 2004, which I don't think is extreme whatsoever. I mean, they, we, we spent a heck of a lot in 2004, or even back to 2001. I think, you know, we'd still spend more than all the industrial countries combined. Um, That's right. But, but um, a lot of people say you're going to lose a lot of jobs, Hank, um, because you're going to – all those – a lot of those people create a lot of jobs. Um, I would argue they're destructive jobs, not constructive, but... I well, mean, we, 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 yeah. we should have a government, a democratically elected government, that uh, pushes for... I mean, some people argue that war is actually good for the economy, is what I'm trying to say. Well, what that's ridiculous. That? Uh, they've been using that argument for the last, uh, uh, you know... Over a hundred years. I think it's ridiculous, but I mean, but I mean, do you care to expand on why it is ridiculous? I mean, well, it, first of all, to support this uh, military-industrial complex, the United States government uh, spends um, over half of its uh, uh, income on the military. On the military. At interest too. Yeah. Um, to a private federal reserve, yeah. It's ridiculous. You know, we should be, uh, you know, we should be investing in uh, green energy. In energy, maybe outer space a little uh, more. Yeah. To make it, uh, uh, you know, more competitive more and cheaper. You know, we, we have uh, green energy uh, like uh, wind, uh, solar. Solar. Uh, geothermal, biomass power, hydro power. Biomass, yeah. I mean, I heard solar. There's like a next generation of solar panels that can. High hydrogen power, ocean energy, uh, so that we, you know, we have a big problem with uh, 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 global warming. Uh, in my opinion, uh, if we. We should be spending not billions for war, but billions to develop uh, green energy. 
Yeah, well, now, um, I think that would be great. I mean, and steady uh, burning uh, coal, oil, and gas, which is causing, in my, like I said, in my opinion. I, I could be with you on that. Now, do you think cap and trade is the answer to global warming, or do you think that there's other No, solutions? that's a stupid business uh, plan yeah, it's to basically enrich uh, uh, yeah. certain capitalists. In but, my, um, now, do you think we should... Like the Federal Reserve should be under the Treasury Department. Is that what the Green Party platform is, or do you think? What do you think? You, you know, do you think the, you know, we should have a national bank? Well, it looks like the Federal Reserve is uh, just worried about the the wealthy in the United States, and they're not worried about the poor and the middle class. You know, and that's who I basically. Uh, uh, want to represent the interests of the poor and the middle class. I'd like to see everybody middle class. I'd like to see, uh, a, a, you know, a redistribution of wealth back to the poor and the middle class. It's been done before in the United States. Um, and that doesn't have to be with just the New in Deal. Direct money. I mean, that could be with education. It could be with you know, um, different kinds of energy and, and things like that, you know, as well. Um, like, oh, well, here's what I, I have a legislative agenda. Okay, yeah, please expand on that, sir. Okay. One, I will immediately uh, sponsor a law to bring back our troops from Afghanistan and stop all drone attacks that are antagonizing people all over the world against the United States. That that's uh, that's that's a uh, uh, a law I would sponsor. Maybe maybe no drones attacking people here in the US as well because that might that's very well be the next step, you know. That's true. Uh, I will sponsor laws that will subsidize research on how we can make green energy uh, cheaper and more productive. Um, you know, I I believe that the coal or coal, oil, and gas uh, is causing the the global warming. Well, that do we, you think um, we, we should have. be able to grow industrial hemp and make ethanol out of that? Yes, I think so. Yes, yes. I, uh, yeah, this, uh, of course. Do you think like people should get grants or loans to get solar for their houses and stuff like that? Absolutely. See, that that's what we should be doing with the the, the money that we're spending on. And on do you think war. that would pay for itself? I mean, so here's the main argument because I think um, between like uh, a technical libertarian and a topic, uh, a technical progressive or liberal or whatever you want to call it is that um, I think that uh, libertarians do have a lot of good gripes against the government. There is a lot of waste of money. There is a lot of bad distribution of wealth that's going to the 1%. And I the think military, what the we're military spending on the military complex, is one of them. The prison industrial complex, the big pharmaceutical companies. I mean, um, a lot of these um, like top five banks. Um, and and, and um, so there, there is a lot of... Fishy, there's a revolving door of businesses regulating themselves. Um, there's a lot of corruption, in other words. And um, so I think they have a lot to be upset about and not very trustful of the government. But I think a way, like um, a progressive might be able to make an argument, is that um, if they could get something that pays for itself and that it's voluntary, then really, I mean, the libertarian thing is... Their, their, their stick is not being forced to do anything at the barrel of a gun. I mean, that's their main principle if you break it down. And um, so I would say, well, get rid of that possibility, and then you can still, like, if there was a national bank, you could provide grants or, like, very low-level interest for people to invest in solar, and solar would pay for itself. That's one of the few products that will actually pay for itself. Solar panels are built to last for, like, 30 years withstand hail and, and then think of all the energy savings about the um, the, the environment how you'll have healthier people and think about how many homes would no longer have electric bills anymore or be like dependents on the grid well, they'd be more independence and that's okay. what okay yeah well let me finish my legislative Absolutely. program and and how I would pay for it if if uh, if that's okay um, you know 
uh, I might disagree with libertarians here, but I will. Uh, I would immediately sponsor a single payer health care law uh, that will cover all Americans from cradle to grave. Uh, it will, uh, and it would function like Medicare. This is what the Green Party uh, pushes, and will basically be Medi Medicare for all. Um, I will uh, also sponsor a bill. Uh, that will uh, recreate what uh, what was called in the 1970s and 80s revenue sharing. Now, revenue sharing is where the federal government gives money to the state and local governments to help pay for state and local services like education, uh, to hire teachers, police, uh, uh, fire and and uh, fire protection. Revenue sharing will uh, reduce uh, real estate taxes, and it will. Uh, I will sponsor a, a federal law that will pay off uh, all student loans, which is now uh, over one trillion dollars. Yeah, there's something really wrong with this. Uh, you know, student loans. <laughs> One trillion dollars. I agree. And maybe we should have a payoff, but something's got to be done about it because we can't just do that and also have education prices continue to rise um, because it does seem like the more money you give to grants, that, that encourages the universities to increase the rates too, right? Right. Um, and I, I would also sponsor a, a laws that will create a jobs program like WPA, the WPA that we had in the 1930s. Uh, I would, I would uh, try to, you know, I would sponsor a, a, a law that would uh, stimulate the economy. Uh, I would create, it would create a, I would sponsor a law that would create a stimulus package that will rebuild uh, and repair our crumbling infrastructure. Uh, for instance, the law would provide money for a road repair, bridge repair, building of schools, and, and, or maybe our and government grid. buildings and parks. Or well, maybe also our electric grid, which needs updating as well. Yes, absolutely. Um, now, People might be asking themselves, how would you finance this? Well, maybe I'll disagree with libertarians on this point, but uh, I would uh, finance it by taxing, of creating, uh, raising the income tax on uh, people making over $250,000. Uh, second of all, anybody making under $100,000 I would not have any tax at all. Um, uh, now, I would, in, you know, have a graduated income tax, uh, you know, as, as income went higher, up to 80, 90 percent. Now, this sounds ridiculous in today's day and age, maybe, but that's what it was. In the 1940s. Well, like in Eisenhower's day and stuff. In the like 1940s, in the 1950s, in the 1960s, right into the 1970s. And we had a decent economy in those days. It wasn't perfect because uh, there was a lot of things wrong with the economy then, too. But, uh, you know, uh, the, the maldistribution is so bad today you know what? Uh, it it could it's it's comparable to what we had in 1929, and what do we have in 1929? The Great Depression. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, it, it really is. Um, you know, like the Prince and the Pauper, and um, you know, it, it's it's like a like a Charles Dickens novel. I mean, what's going on nowadays? And. Um, yeah, it's it's uh now I would say, you know what? I don't totally agree with everything you just said, but you know what? It's better than what we have now. It's better than a fascistic Obamacare where you're forced to buy private insurance and where Obama has um made exceptions for a lot of his buddies like McDonald's, I think is one of them that is not going to be required to do the health care and um while other businesses McDonald's? Uh, what's McDonald's? They're remember uh, they're not 
uh, forced to do the mandates for the health care, um, the Obamacare. So, like, he gave that business an exception. Um, so it's not really equal all the way around. Oh, okay. but, but, um, but here's another thing I would argue about the, um, the, the health care um, is that, you know what, I, I don't think I would be opposed to a public option um, as long as it was voluntary and that it paid for itself. So if you could save money on expenditures because of CEO salaries, because of advertising, because of being able to buy in bulk and, and, and having um, elected official accountability towards it, um, you know, and it's a public option, just kind of like the post office is a public option to FedEx and UPS, then I, I say go for it. I might even buy into it, you know. Here's the fact. The overhead, the expense for running uh, Medicare is about 1%. Yeah, and you could get rid of Medicaid, too. If you just had a Medicare public option for all, then, then you could... Um, yeah. yeah. Now, for these insurance companies, it's uh, the, the overhead, the expense, is about 10 20% because, you know, the CEOs are making uh, millions of dollars. But not only that, they have to pay a profit. And you know um, how much? Yeah, right. Because they're publicly traded companies, and um, and and you know um, how much this would help small and mid-sized and even big businesses as well. Well, the United States. That's true. The United States has. Uh, we have to we, we pay about Germany. sixteen or seventeen percent of our GDP on on uh, health care yeah. uh, countries like Germany and France which uh, uh, you know has uh, public uh, health uh, paid by the government um, they uh, you know the the, the, the uh, health in, health uh, insurance or the health care is only about 10 percent or nine or ten percent yeah so we're paying a larger part of our uh, gross domestic product and we're getting less care i know we, we we pay more and get less i mean that's about the worst i mean if we pay more at least we should get more right um that's right and, you know, i mean that that's you know, look at canada's health care bill it was like five pages long and ours is like 2700 pages i i mean it, it, it it's completely ridiculous and um uh, so, I mean, and I also think we should respect, like, certain groups like the Amish who might not want, you know, the same kind yeah, of health care, uh, yes, uh, alternative you know, health care people, people. We don't have to yeah. force anybody into any program. Yeah, exactly, because some people might, you know, there might be, you know, um, advances in the future where the way we look at health care, I mean, once we learn about DNA and stuff, I, I mean, it might we might be looking at a whole different thing in the future anyway, so we don't want to get too trapped into this insurance type of system that we have, even though it's, you, you know, it makes sense. I mean, you, you know, it, it it's, um, distributes um, uh, risk versus, uh, you, you know, aversion to risk. So, I mean, you, you know, there's a lot to talk about there. Energy. I, I think, um, yeah, we don't need a cap and trade, of course, but I, I which doesn't even address the problem. Um, it just lets people, you know, find their ways around it, actually. But I think real environmental disasters like, you know, spreading of genetically modified foods out in the public, the, 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 the you know, the, the big um, trash that's in the oceans, um, you know, with the Fukushima and the, the oil spills and... Um, and, 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 you know, there's a lot of, I don't think we really need to be, you're right, we probably don't need to be as much on oil as we have been. That would reduce a lot of it's wars. It's causing global warming. The, yeah, so let's the, fight it. Let's fight the gases, it. The gases, you know, the CO2 that it's, uh, I mean, I think whether you even believe in global warming or not, you can make the argument if you have good solutions. If there are good enough solutions... It doesn't even have to be about global warming, but it'll have that same effect. You know what I mean? Like, solar, right. I think, is good whether you believe in global warming or not. I mean, by the, yeah. by the way, we're, we're, uh, we're conducting this interview for, 
45 minutes already. No, I know, I know. It's uh, so. Well, the, the, what we usually ask at the end here is, um, is like, who are some of your favorite people, um, and, and and why? Like, or people that you find interesting. They might not be. They could be people you have admired, or people that uh, you just find interesting for whatever reason whether in the past or nowadays and um it could be a particular person or a group of people or just however you want to answer that and and why sir okay well um i'm uh yeah i like uh ralph nader a lot he uh, he did run with the green party um uh, twice for president and he has a lot of ideas good ideas that I think uh, could help uh, create a better democracy. Um, um, you know, I, I, uh, I like a lot of people who are candidates uh, with the Green Party. Um, they, they have some uh, good uh, uh, ideas and they, they kind of express them pretty well. Uh, so uh, uh, that's uh, you know that's basically who. Uh, Good answer. I mean, I've I like Ralph Nader too. I mean, the funny things I have voted for him in the past um, because I saw the priority issues number one, and I've also voted for a libertarian candidate for president yeah. in the past. Um, to me, it's those big issues like war, the drug war, civil liberties. Like if we could just get those three issues. Um, uh, handled and that as may I ask you where do you stand on pro-life pro-choice and what would you legislate about the drug war sir well um, I you know I, I I don't like the idea of abortion but um, I think a woman should have the freedom to uh, uh, you know get an abortion if she wanted within the first uh, uh, and, so, and second trimester. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm not into any type of drugs myself. Uh, I, I don't believe in drugs uh, to uh, make people happy. Um, right, but do you think people like for smoking a joint should be put behind prison if they didn't commit any crime no, or I don't there's a think victim besides uh, themselves? You know, I, you, know, uh, me, you know, we should have uh, a medical a marijuana and, uh, you know, um, we're, we're ruining a, a lot of lives because of these... Uh, uh, of this uh, so-called drug war. We have the highest incarceration rate. There's a for-profit prison industrial complex, and um, and a lot of people that are in drugs, I mean, are in jail, are there simply because of drugs, and that has split apart a lot of families, and that's just, you know, the facts. Um, so yeah. there's hundreds I, I, of thousands. Yeah, I getting back to what we were discussing before, you said, who do I, you know, people I like. Um, I'm... I'm uh, and I'm supporting, uh, I like uh, our presidential candidate, Jill Stein, and our vice presidential candidate, uh, Sherry Honkler. Um, they are very knowledgeable, and they are very articulate, and I think uh, this year they're going to um, uh, make the Green Party uh, uh, do well on the presidential ballot. Yeah, and even if they get a certain I, percentage, okay, that will help them four years from now, whether they win or not. They'll that means they'll get more funding yeah. in four years, and then that the party will be more well known and have more opportunities. There's um, somebody just rang my bell. All right, I heard that. So, well, um, we do thank you for your time and your accessibility. Um, this is stuff. Um, this type of interview and types of questions you might not hear from regular candidate. This is the openness and transparency that. We would hope to get for people that want to represent us. This is not your typical politician. Um, I do appreciate your time, Hank. And um, 
So uh, thank you once again. I'll say goodbye to you real quick after in the interview. And um, best success November 6th. Uh, just getting the vote out so people know all of their options so they can make a more fully informed decision. And thank you once again, Hank. Let's have it. Thank you for the interview. And let's vote for a more democratic society. Yep. And so, I mean, you know, uh, votes um, and... Um, and, and, and then, you know, that's how you can make a difference. Uh, so don't vote for a Republican or the Democrat if you're not going to vote. Um, and, um, but that doesn't mean there isn't any other choices. So. Okay.